from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's, he's moved from uh, Memphis, went to the LA Times, went to Investors Business Daily. Uh, you know, it's in this era, two Pulitzers doesn't necessarily guarantee you one newspaper anymore, but wherever he goes, he takes tremendous talent. So we have both from the left and from the right, two great cartoonists. Please welcome up here, Darren Bell and Michael Ramirez. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled to meet Johnny Depp in person. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Tell me, if he'd send his paychecks my way, it would be, <laughs> be a good thing. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, and first, um, you know, often political cartoonists, uh, people have an impression. They sense that it must be this curmudgeon off somewhere and, you know, must sort of feel whether the left or the right sort of bitter or angry all the time. And actually, political cartoonists are often some of the happiest people I know because they let the, their vitriol is in their pen and they get it out and they're often some of the healthiest people I know. But they often have the least opportunity to get for the public to know them. Yes. Um, so with each of you, you know, I always like doing origin stories. So Darren, I know you were born in, in L.A. Right. And, uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about, like, when, when did you get... Do you remember when you first got political or were your parents political people? When, when did you feel that? Uh, my, my parents weren't really political, but yeah. our newspaper was. It oh. had, they, I remember they added Bloom County. Were you reading and the Times or which I, we re This was back a long time ago when yeah. every city had more than one paper. Sure. So we got the Times, we got the, um, what was the other the one? The Herex, Herald Examiner. Where's Herald Examiner. Herald, oh, Herald, Examiner. Herald, Herald Examiner. Examiner, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know where, which one it was in, because yeah. I took both of them. But all I knew was there was a penguin, yeah. and I had to see what it was doing every day. <laughs> and um, one day it mentioned Casper Weinberger, yeah. and that was a funny sounding word. I had to figure, <laughs> I just had to know what he was talking about. Yeah. And I, I was like five or six. Yeah. So... That, that was my, that's how I got into politics. Most kids at five or six, it was Casper the Ghost, and you're getting from Berkeley Breathed, Casper Weinberger in your right. mom. And so, Michael, I, know, I believe you were born in Tokyo. Yes. And uh, how, long did you, how long of growing up did you spend there, and did you move around, and what were you reading? My mom was Japanese, so yeah. I, I, um, the first language I spoke was Japanese, which yeah. is why you may not understand my cartoons. <laughs> uh, I lived there until I was around six, yeah. and then we went back stateside, and then back to Japan. Yeah. My dad was in the army for 23 years. Wow, okay. I kind of followed him around. Yeah. I, lived in, uh, you know, I lived in Germany for two years, in yeah. Belgium for a year. Yeah. We lived in Paris for eight months. Were you picking up languages as you go? Or? Uh, no, but I, I was getting a pretty deep rap sheet in different languages. <laughs> uh, Interpol got my picture. and You, you know, um, it's funny. My mom is Japanese. My dad is half Mexican and half Spanish, so yeah. I'm completely confused. <laughs> Well, it doesn't come through in your cartoon. It comes through crystal clear. Um, so, you know, what, what I think uh, when I started thinking about editorial cartooning years ago, uh, they were thick through the, across the land, right? We had, uh, we used to have 200 at least political cartoonists, staff political cartoonists, and then it would dwindle. It was like 70 and maybe now 30 officially full-time cartoonists, maybe. And, and then you have... Three, three and a half. <laughs> it is shrinking. But, you know, uh, and, and comic strip syndication has changed so much. Sales, the sales aren't the same. But you guys, I mean, you're so talented. But did you ever think about selling insurance or decide, you know, <laughs> these are my skills and this is what I'm passionate about. And regardless of the market, you know, what, what motivates you? Is it having that voice? Well, it's, it's, it's partly what you said at the beginning, yeah. how we, we're, we're the most, some of the most calm people you'll, yeah. you can imagine. Because this is like art therapy yeah. for adults. Yeah. I mean, I, I get to talk about Trump and Clinton all the time through my pen, and then afterwards, I'm happy. You can zen I out. got it out. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like what we do um, is important. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, what we, I, I think back to when I was a kid, mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing that made me, reading Conrad, reading um, Bloom County, that's what made me interested in 
in politics and in the, the wider world. Yeah, that would be Paul Conrad, who was an icon at the LA Times. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and so I, I feel like, um, you know, I, when, whenever I draw a cartoon, I know that some little kid somewhere yeah. is going to see it yeah. and think, I have to know what this guy's talking about, and yeah. he's going to want to go read yeah. and, and find out for himself and, and start to think critically yeah. about the world. So it's, yeah. I, I, see it, I see it as a service. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could have I gone to Trump University and yeah. gone into <laughs> real estate or something. Sell stakes. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I never aspired to be a political cartoonist. I wanted to be a cardiovascular surgeon. That's right, medicine. Well, you're... All my brothers and sisters are doctors, except for me, I'm the black sheep of the family. Yeah. Um, and, and my relative calmness comes from the electroshock <laughs> therapy that I have. <laughs> but I'm a big believer in, in what we do. Yeah. And as corny as it sounds, I think, uh, you know, I view editorial cartooning as, as pure journalism. Yeah. In fact, it's probably some of the most effective journalism Absolutely. out there because yeah. people that read the editorial page always turn to the cartoons and yeah. look at them. Yeah. So it can have an, a profound impact. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I never set out to uh, draw cartoons for a living. I never even thought about it. Yeah. The first cartoon I ever did was in college. Wow. And uh, you see Irvine? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you see Irvine. Did you get a reaction to it? I, you know, there's an ulterior, uh, I have ulterior motives for everything. Sure. Uh, in high school, we had a closed campus, so yeah. you couldn't leave campus except the exception of having a, a, a hall pass from the office yeah. or a press pass. Wow. The guy who controlled the press pass was the editor of the newspaper, yeah. so naturally I became the editor of the newspaper. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> whenever the waves got over three foot, yeah. you know, I had to go over there and, and report how the surfing was. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I wrote, and then when I went into college, I continued to write. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I wrote editorials, I, I wrote uh, reviews. I found out that uh, you, know, you could get albums yeah. and tickets to world premieres and both Darren and I live in LA. Yeah. That's a bonus. Um, yeah. You get free stuff. Yeah. And all you had to do was just write about it. Yeah. Now I was a, a triple major in college, biological sciences, fine arts, studio painting, and art history. Yeah. And the only reason why I did the latter two was because my older brother and sister who pre preceded me said, Look, medical schools are looking for more well-rounded students. They don't yeah. want straight yeah. bio sci students. So why don't since you can draw, yeah. why don't you do that art thing? Yeah. And UCI had a very uh, conceptual art department, yeah. and I could make up really good excuses for bad art. <laughs> and so I, I was just doing that. And one day I was filing a story, and my editor looked at the cartoon, and I mean at the uh, at the painting I was working yeah. on. She yeah. said, "Now we have a student election going on right now. Why don't you do a cartoon on the?" On that, uh, yeah. And so uh, I tried to interview all the candidates. I only met, really met with two. Looked into the other ones and found out there was no real platform for running. Yeah. And so I made fun of all of them. <laughs> and the day that cartoon came out, we had three days worth of protests. Wow. Over this cartoon. You generated by you. But generated by my by cartoon. Your cartoon. And I got called in front of the student government to apologize to the school. Yeah. Because I needed to be educated. <laughs> and so I appeared in front of the uh, the. Uh, the student council, and I said, you guys are absolutely right. I do need to be educated. That's why I'm pursuing three degrees. But thank you for your concern. <laughs> and, and then I left. But I realized, and I'd been writing all this stuff that I thought was having an impact. Yeah. But you draw one cartoon and half the campus hates you. Yeah. What a great forum. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And yeah. so that, that really caught my interest, yeah. although I hadn't changed my uh, career path. Yeah. It wasn't until my, bless you, it wasn't until... Huh. My junior year in uh, college, we had this incident. A, a local paper hired me about a month and a half after I started at yeah. a new university called the Newport Ensign. Yeah. And um, uh, it, was, it was a great deal because I usually took this break to go surfing yeah. in between uh, organic chemistry and bio 101. Yeah. And this place was just along the way. Yeah. And uh, so I could get into a little mischief, you know, whip out a cartoon. Yeah. I got $50 a cartoon, which yeah. was a pretty good payback sure. then. And then there's this incident where the Newport Beach police uh, pulled over this guy, arrested him for drunk driving, mm -hmm. didn't allow him a phone call. Yeah. And as it turned out, he was a, a Newport City councilman who didn't drink. Yeah. And so I did this cartoon where I had this guy hogtied on the hood of a police car with a shoe wedge in his mouth. And the arresting officer was explaining to his sergeant, I was merely reinforcing his constitutional right to remain silent. Yeah. Uh. And uh, 
I went into the uh, into the office that one day, and the police chief happened to be there. Yeah. And he was yelling at the uh, publisher, and he was yelling at the editor. Yeah. And then he tried to find out where I lived. <laughs> wow. And I realized what a profound impact yeah. this drawing has. And I think that was the moment I fell in love with uh, yeah. political cartooning. Absolutely. Well, this year hasn't given us much to do, but uh, <laughs> I literally was in the gift shop. I needed something to eat, and there was a... Uh, uh, it was literally a basket of deplorable Skittles, and there were too many political <laughs> metaphors in one basket, and I couldn't <laughs> literally eat it. But let us let us go through. Uh, Michael, this is your for the cover from your book, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Obamacare. Uh, you've had a, a, a wealth. You know, it's always that mixed blessing. You may not agree politically with who's in office, but what material they give you. And you've had seven and a half and counting years of... of of Obama. Uh, absolutely. It's, this is the administration that's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. And you know, in this presidential election cycle, it's been like Christmas all year round. Yeah. Right? yeah. I, in fact, I don't even think I'm an editorial cartoonist anymore. I'm a glorified stenographer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the best gag writers in the business working for me, they're called politicians. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just taking notes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, this, this book picks up uh, where the first book ended at the yeah. beginning of the Obama administration. So yeah. it kind of, I am an equal opportunity offender, although I am a right-wing conservative Neander knuckle-dragging Neanderthal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but believe me, there's, there's enough in politics to go around. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll look at some of these, and, uh, and you can go to michaelpramirez.com to follow him, and there's all this information. So let's look. This is the, the building of a cartoon, because there, there's a magic to it. So could you talk about sort of the, the process of how, you, how a cartoon is born? Well, you know, Michael, the strange thing is when I think of the ideas, I see in images. Yeah. And so um, this, this first image here is a cocktail napkin. Mm -hmm. I, I have a... a Literally week, drawing on a cocktail On a cocktail napkin. Yeah. And the way this began was uh, I had a weekly process where I would meet a f with a friend of mine. He's, uh, he's so well-read. He knows every subject you could think of. Yeah. We read newspapers and we talk politics for two hours while we eat uh, tacos, yeah. Yeah. 99 cent tacos. Nice. And so I would think of ideas while we we're talking and I would just sketch them out on these little napkins. Yeah. And I ended up stealing napkins yeah. every week, so I got yeah. a big pile. Yeah. But anytime I think of an idea, because there's so much going on, yeah. I automatically just sketch it out on a napkin. So yeah. this is the beginning of the process right here. Okay. And, it, and then what I do is I transfer it to uh, you know, just copy paper yeah. so that I have a larger, uh, more recognizable uh, version of it yeah. that I can send out to a group of guys. Now, yeah. I started doing this when I was co-managing the, the editorial page at Investors Business Daily. Yeah. About eight people that uh, I sort of rely on for their opinion. You trust their sense. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll email it to them and yeah. uh, try to find out, you know, which ones are the best ones. Yeah. And they tell me which ones they like the most, and they ignore them, and then just do whatever one I want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then it comes out to in the black and white stage here, because we, we run cartoons both in color and black and white. And then you do your color. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the color is done on Photoshop, and yeah. this is pretty much the final yeah. copy. That's so you can see from the napkin sketch to the final, it pretty much looks the same yeah. all the way yeah. through. You know, some cartoonists like to keep everything very simple and you, you you talk about a joy you there's a joy you seem to to beautifully design the frame and you like filling up the frame is it something well you know it's it's uh, the ulterior motive it's yeah the bait in the trap yeah um, you now people are drawn to the visual medium yeah and, and people know uh, philosophically and politically where i stand yeah. but if you can make the illustration you know interesting enough yeah then regardless of that, they're going to want to take a peek. Yeah. Once they take a peek, then you've got them. You've got them in. Now, I'm a big believer in this art form of just trying to have as a, a big of impact as possible, yeah. reach as many people as possible, yeah. and be the catalyst for thought. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, everybody loves art. Yeah. Well, let's take a peek at some of your work. So tell us about We the Government. So now this is, these are cartoons that are in the book. We the Government is a pretty s simple and straightforward mm -hmm. uh, cartoon. The way I think about it is political cartoons are sort of like the Super Bowl ads. Mm -hmm. You have two seconds to seize their attention, yeah. three seconds to make the sale, and the only difference is with, with uh, you know, political cartoons, you're selling an idea. Yeah. With the Super Bowl ad, they're selling a product. Yeah. This is just a simple, straightforward representation of yeah. how we've shifted from being a, uh, a democratic re republic that uh, is ruled by the people, yeah. shifting to the power of the government. Yeah. Yeah. And here's uh, the United States dollar made yeah. in China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have Hugh Gentile's signature down there. Love it. Love Secretary it. Treasury. Okay. 
Give Me Liberty or Give Me a Government Bailout, which yes. is uh, where I got the title of my book. Yeah. It was originally going to be Conservatives are from Mars and uh, Progressives are from Uranus, but they rejected that. Uh, <laughs> Couldn't do it. Could it. You send that out to the eight gang of eight, <laughs> I'm sure right. that one went They right all down. rejected it. Yeah. And you got Obama with the, the selfie here? The selfie is Nero. Yeah. His Rome is burning. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you, you really, I mean, cartoonists like to draw with big ears, but you really, I mean, it's, it's like lips <laughs> and then full on ear. And well, you, you know what? The, the way I stylize him, of course, his eyes are always half closed, so he's looking down his nose at you. Okay. Yeah. And then the ears are getting bigger every time there, there's an untruth or a half truth or a lie. Ah. And so I think by the end of December, he might just be two little beady eyes and two giant. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. And then the mountain of debt. Right. Someday yeah. all this will be yours. <laughs> And, and, you know, when you think about it, I mean, we've got $20 trillion of national debt. Yeah. We've got, to, you know, the, the federal budget is like $3 trillion. Yeah. So you can put that in perspective. Absolutely. We have $128 trillion in unfunded liabilities from entitlements. Yeah. And uh, what we're giving our kids, I mean, at $20 trillion, I don't know what it was, and at $17 trillion, it was like $54,000 worth of debt per person. Yeah. It's not going away. And so... And then... Uh, this is my uh, Trump cartoon, We Need a President, uh, which uh, I can't read it exactly, but basically yeah. the gag of the cartoon is that see. everything they describe, yeah. uh, prescribed to Trump, uh, is exactly what uh, Pre President Obama has done for the last seven and a half years. Yeah, yeah. And then Weekend. Weekend, weekend of, of Bernie's. Bernie's. Yes. <laughs> uh, it shows yeah. you. You know, I wish I could make stock picks as well as I could yeah. uh, cartoon forget <laughs> predictions. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful. That's pretty soft. And then you have great fun with Trump's hair, his lips. I mean, you go to town on this. Could you talk about... You no, know, Trump has just been a, a wonderful gift. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, here it's building a wall. You know, he's saying some of the right things, but he says so many of the wrong things all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. You just want him to stop. I had another cartoon where I had a Trump sticker across his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That way he could promote himself but not say anything. Yeah. That's, Much safer for his campaign. Beautiful. Yeah. And you get into the eyebrows, too, as beautifully as the hair. Some people will miss the, the art of that eyebrow. Well, you know, caricatures are an important element of political Absolutely. cartoon because they actually define the personality as yeah. well. Yeah. When you think of Richard Nixon during Watergate, yeah. look at you know the, the cartoons that preceded that period yeah. Yeah. where he wasn't so dark and he yeah. didn't have that you know, five, the five o'clock o'clock shadow. shadow. At nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got jowlier. Right. The, the whole thing changed. The Just nose darker changed. and more foreboding. Yeah. This one always shocks me the old the uh, you the know Hillary 2016 which uh, once again it's a, in these cartoons i think resonate the best they're pretty straightforward yeah basically i'm saying hillary clinton is a uh, third term for barack obama yeah yeah and then always strange yeah. bedfellows right and this is the cartoon i drew after the republican convention which is yeah. the morning after yeah they suddenly after their drunken party they <laughs> realize who they've woken up with. Wow. <laughs> I'm saying I was amazing, I know. You, you sent this to me a couple of weeks ago and I did not sleep well that night. I just couldn't <laughs> get this out of my head. I'm, now I won't sleep well tonight either, That's so right. it's a little jarring. So, so this... This yeah. is the cartoon I did to the uh, day after the Democratic convention. Yeah. See, it's yeah. confetti, now it's Hillary's emails. That's beautiful. That's, right. That's beautiful. And the detail is just gorgeous. Right. Okay, I'm playing off a movie title, obviously. Right. And so we use we use iconic images that people can relate to. Yeah, it's like a current culture currency. Right. right? It's yeah. you know it's sort of a, you know hitching your your uh, cartoon to the star. Whatever people are focused on. Yeah. Whatever I can utilize to get people to look at the cartoon, yeah. so I can have the impact. Yeah. This is based on the Angry Birds movie, obviously. Yeah. And, yeah. and I just have one Angry Bird, the American Eagle, and he's yes. saying. The, really, out of 320 million people, these yeah. are the two best. We these can. are our choices. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, here are the pants on on fire. We determine what started the massive fires. Hillary Clinton's pants. <laughs> and, same way, you know, and to be accurate, it should say pants suits on fire. Yeah, yes. I, I recognize those from the previous. <laughs> exactly. And so. Uh, and then yeah. you know everybody everybody has a a tramp stamp. This is yes. the Trump stamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, know, you always have that tattoo that you sort of regretted. Yes, afterwards. exactly. You wake up in the next morning and, uh, yeah. And, and a, a little version of the Clinton Foundation. This is yeah. what the foundation of the Clinton Foundation is. Yeah. Which what is, is our huge, huge bags of money. Yeah. But, you, you know, I'm, I feel humbled to be here since you guys are, you're paying me $200,000, right? To yeah. 
to be here. Of course, of course, yeah. We just talk to the foundation. Sure they, they, they control that fund. Absolutely. Yeah. And so here you get a double, a twin shot at both of them. Right, right, right. I was, I was thinking about these candidates, and uh, a friend of mine was making campaign buttons. Yeah. And this inspired me for this idea. Yeah. Was, you know, at least That's... he's not Hillary. At least he's not Trump. I love it. Which seems yeah. to be the focus of this election. So and the fading light of liberty uh, oh. and this policy of leading from beyond. Yeah. That just makes me sad for them. <laughs> but you know, I was influenced by uh, by Paul Conrad as well. Yeah. I, mean, I, I read the newspaper every morning with my dad. And yeah. Swap papers and it's largely Jeff McNally and yeah. Paul Conrad. Yeah. And and I was friends with both of them. Sure. And uh, I love their cartoons. Yeah. Paul and I could probably not agree on a single thing. Yeah. But you cannot you cannot ad, but ad, admire yeah. the dramatic nature of his work. The the impact. And these beautiful you know, hard-hitting, dramatic images, yeah. and the powerful message, which now I believe that's the essence of editorial cartooning. Yeah. I know a lot of cartoonists uh, today, because we've kind of shifted from journalism into infotainment, yeah. uh, kind of think that editorial cartoons ought to be an, a humorous anecdote about current events, sort of like the Tonight Show monologue. Yeah. But I'm a big believer in editorial cartoon as an aspect of journalism. Absolutely. And that the substantive message is the most important element. Yeah. And so, I mean, you don't have to be able to draw. In fact, ironically enough, I don't like to draw. Yeah, really? Because my inability to capture what I see in my mind's eye, yeah. uh, you know, is frustrating. Yeah. Uh, therefore, the electroshock treatments. But, uh, <laughs> or I just watch, you know, I, I turn on uh, C-SPAN and watch Congress, and that dulls all my senses right there. But, um, you know, I, I'm, as corny as it sounds, I'm a big believer in the art form. Yeah. I, I want to have an impact yeah. in my... Um, in, in my stint at the Memphis Commercial Appeal, sure. there was an instance where during that, uh, it was the early 90s, yeah. and so we were still going through this um, poor economic times, and the Tennessee legislature could not pass their uh, pay raise because yeah. constitutionally they have to have a vote of the people. Yeah. And so I was there at the end of the legislative session when they're, they're passing this flurry of bills, yeah. and uh, there was one where they attached to this unrelated bill a writer that increased their pension by 40%. Wow. I was there in the well at 1 o'clock in the morning in the house. Yeah. I noticed this thing, showed it to our National Bureau guy. Yeah. And I did this cartoon which had this big pig who looked like amazingly like Governor Ned McWhorter, not saying that it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, his advisor was saying, how can you justify a 40% pension increase in light of this budget shortfall? Yeah. And, and what are you going to do when there's a public outcry? Yeah. And the pig had a big smile on his face, and he said, retire. Wow, wow. When that cartoon hit the stands with the accompanying uh, article, uh, they rescinded the bill in five days. Wow. So I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. a big believer in this art form. Yeah. I passionately believe, you know, this, the, the essence of where we live, this foundational liberty that we yeah. have. And uh, you know, we've both visited uh, our troops abroad. We know what the price of liberty and freedom is. Yeah. Um, I want to remind people that this is their government, that right. these people are their public servants, absolutely. and they're here to serve us, and they're here to do our bidding. Yeah, absolutely. Well, amen to continuing to do journalism, and, and you know, some people uh, in a clickbait time uh, want to offer just the best punchline, the best people used to say, like it was a Jay Leno laugh line, yeah. but to be able to deliver something with power and force and relevance is, to me, it's like what journalism is about. So, uh, and to, to go to that, let's look at what uh, Darren Bell's work from, from uh, more from the left. So I think this one was from last year, Darren, uh, when you had the gavel, the Supreme Court gavel, erasing gay from marriage. Could you talk about coming up with well, this? Well, I, <clears throat> I had been drawing cartoons about, um, about gay marriage and, and equal rights for gay people since 2000. Yeah. Um, before a lot of other people were doing it. Yeah. it when I was a when I was um, a, a, co a cartoonist for my college paper at UC Berkeley, yeah, back then it wasn't even popular at UC Berkeley. The, to be a political cartoon. No, it was, <laughs> that, that too. I mean, I, I had my own I'm protests. Kidding. So, yeah, and yeah, all that. But the the issue, gay yeah, marriage, sure. it was it was not popular. Yeah, um, and the more the more it went on the more detailed my cartoons got the more i tried to drive my point home yeah and sooner it, after a while the tide started to turn mm. and 
when the Supreme Court finally put an end to it, I thought, for a second I thought, um, now I've got to do something like really, like the most beautiful cartoon I've ever done. Yeah. It has to be detailed, it has to fill up the whole space, I have to top everything because this is it. Yeah. It's the finish line. Yeah. But all I felt was there is no gay marriage now. Yeah. It's just yeah. marriage. Yeah. And that was the cartoon. Yeah. And you and I talked a couple years ago about um, that you need to feel it. You, you pa passion and emotion. Some people say like don't don't get worked up, and you feel like that's something that's a resource that you tap that goes into your work. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I usually start with <clears throat> I, I don't start with um, like writing down an idea. Yeah. I, I usually start just drawing, wow. and whatever I feel. I, I let that come out, yeah. and then I massage that into a cartoon. Yeah. Um, I, I make sure it I make sure it says the point logically as well. Yeah. But if it's not something that I'm feeling, yeah. I don't feel like it's something worth saying. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. Well, speaking of the party of small government, <laughs> yikes! What what were you thinking when you were drawing this one? <laughs> Let me take the water bottle. Away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's just the sometimes when 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 there's something going on that I feel is just plain disgusting, like getting into those issues, yeah. trying to legislate those issues. Yeah. I try to come up with an image that's sort of equally disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. And and gets right to the heart of why it's disgusting. And that's the ultimate hypocrisy, I think. The, yeah. the party of small government should not be involved in anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, your editors with the Washington Post Writers Group, when you get disgusted, disgusting, mm -hmm. is your editor, uh, you know, what, what's, your, what's your batting average of getting disgusting cartoons into print or not? Um, 99.9. All right, all right. They're, they're behind me almost all the way. All right, that's fantastic. Yeah. I've, only, I've, I've only had one or two cartoon yeah. spike. Okay. And those all end up on my Facebook page. Okay, so we'll flag those, we'll flag those. Yeah. So do you want to tell us about, the, about this one? <clears throat> well, um, coming into the election, um, Fox News and the, the rest of the right wing Intelligentsia were mm -hmm. trying to talk, trying to reach out to black people. Yeah, they were trying to advance the theory, the the, the, the plantation theory. Yeah, telling us that why are you supporting Democrats? Yeah. They haven't done anything for you. Yeah, and there's nothing as belittling and demeaning yeah. as telling somebody that they've been supporting the wrong people for the last fifty years because they don't know any better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's where I came up with insulting the intelligence. Of, yeah, yeah, and not not completely dissimilar here about racism and it, and it being gone and and the tattoos. You can see the Confederate tattoo. Yeah. Wow, that is disgusting. That that, that was during the you you all remember the um, Confederate flag was being removed from yes. state houses state because houses. of that massacre at the church. Yeah, yeah. and I. I they could remove the symbol. Yeah, I, I want them to remove the symbol. Yes, yeah. that's, that's great. I think it's. I I always thought it was a symbol of treason. Yeah, I never understood why people, why people are proud of it. Yeah, because it, the the war was about slavery. Yeah, but you could remove the symbol, but it doesn't really change anybody's hearts. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Very well said. And and this is as powerful it gets. I mean, it's it's a, such a decision. I mean, you're going to show something as graphic. I've, I talked to Paul Conrad about this once about showing dead bodies and what do you do? I mean, he would draw a, a child, an aborted child, on a crucifix, you know, on, on a cross. So, but tell us about uh, about this. You know, and it's always you can derive still humor from that conflict between having something as light as balloons and, and the bodies. Can you talk about this? Well, that that's another one of those disgusting things. You have this you had this massacre at a college, and then you had you had a, a candidate running for president yeah. who basically turned himself into a clown yeah. by interjecting himself into it and saying, yeah. "Well, if it had been me, I would have." I would have rushed the gunmen. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not blaming you guys, yeah. you dead people, for 
not doing it, but yeah. I would have done it. Yeah, exactly. He sounded like a, a superhero, like he would have just handled it perfectly. And then you did this. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the next day, Jeb, yeah. Jeb said, stuff happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think he he lost the he lost he lost right there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, and you got the NRA solution here. Yeah. Well, the the day after the um, the the massacre at that at the nightclub. Yeah. In Florida. Yeah. Um, people were already talking about how if if the if it hadn't been a gun free zone, if yeah. people had had guns. Yeah. And my first thought was this is a like almost pitch black room full of drunk people and strobe lights. Yeah. And even what the could cops go wrong? didn't want to, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and even, even the cops didn't want to go yeah. in because that's yeah. not a good environment for shooting people. In. Yeah, yeah. And so that, wow. that's good. not exactly how it would have turned out if yeah. all those people had been armed. Yeah, wow. And then you, you invoke the uh, little rascals here. Yeah. So can you talk about the Hillary hater, the He-Man Hillary haters club? Yeah, it says the, the meeting is now in order, first order of business. What do you fellas say if we were to change the name of our club to the Select Committee on Benghazi? <laughs> well, they, they tried her seven or eight times and, yeah. and never, turned, never turned up what they were looking for. Yeah. And it, it was pretty obvious, I think, to everybody who didn't already despise Clinton yeah. that this was, this was political. Yeah. They, they were trying, because until Benghazi happened, they were all praising her. They were mm -hmm. saying she's, she's like an excellent bipartisan um, person who we could work with. Yeah. Why can't the president be more like her? Yeah. And then it became obvious she was going to run for president, so they had to find some issue yeah. that they knew they could hang around her neck yeah. in a couple of years when the election came around. Yeah, yeah. And I like how you did Petey there, too, facing the... Yeah. Yeah. So you got so you get to the, again to have fun. I mean, a glorious year with the Trump caricature, and to have great fun and to get sort of that scowl. But uh, can you talk about this one? Well, that that guy really he buys his own publicity. He really pumps himself up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if he took himself seriously at first. Yeah. But the more he talked and the more crowds he saw, yeah, the more he bought into his own yeah. his own hype. Yeah. And He's, he's gotten into dangerous xenophobic demagogue territory. Yeah, so more and more self-inflated, as, yeah. as it were. Yeah. So you get Bernie voters, Hillary voters. Yeah, well, tip, it, tipping the scale here. Yeah, I mean, I, as as Michael does, I, I go after I go after my own side too. Yeah. Um, because what what. Uh, what I do with it, the reason I want to be an editorial cartoonist is I want to talk about what what bothers me, what I think what I think is wrong, yeah. and what I think we're we're a better country than than what than what we see out there. Yeah. And one of the things I think is wrong yeah. is the system being rigged. Yeah. And whether it's rigged on on the right or rigged on the left, mm -hmm. we should pay attention to that, and we shouldn't be okay with that. Yeah. Um, so you've become a Donald Trump supporter, then? It, <laughs> 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 well, the, the thing, and, and if you'll notice, there, there are more voters on her side anyway. That's because she was winning anyhow. Yeah. She didn't have, yeah. the DNC did not have to step in on her behalf and schedule, um, schedule the debates at, at one in the morning and yeah. when nobody, when like two people were watching. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have to do any of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, you gave Wasserman Schultz quite a, a manicure there, so that, yeah. was, that was good. Um, so can you talk about the, the, t your take on the hand of God? Well, that, that's, um, that's one of those things where I just started drawing what I felt. Yeah. He was talking about the wall. He was saying yeah. the, for the millionth time. Um, and I was thinking, this just, that's not our, our country. Yeah. That's not the country I grew up in. Yeah. Who is this guy? Yeah. Who, where is he getting his inspiration from? Yeah. Who, who created him? Yeah. And then I got the cartoon. And then it came. Thanks for making him clothed, by the way, just oh, in terms right. of avoiding disgusting. I, I didn't at first. Ooh, thanks thanks right. for putting that image in my mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm just paying I, pay I added back. the suit at the last minute. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Uh, Donald Trump's America here? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't think all cartoons have to be funny. In fact, um, I was talking to Michael earlier about 
some, we have, one of our favorite comics that we have in common is, is Calvin and Hobbes. And I was thinking back to when I was a kid, mm -hmm. there was one day when I realized, I don't think I've ever laughed at a Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. Even though it's my favorite strip. Yeah. Every, what, what I think when I see it is that's, that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. why I loved it, because it made me feel some, it, I identified with it, I saw truth in it. Yeah. So I, I don't think humor is necessary, is necessary for, for every cartoon. Yeah. Especially when it comes to something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. And so you've got the, uh, the Gunner Blood Axe here for president and another, uh, you know, just that, that hardcore. When you just use a pop of red, boy, it has such an impact, so much more impact. Can you talk about this one? Well, the, the guy in the audience says, still, I like that he says what he thinks. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, we all know that's, that's what yeah. people say about yeah. Trump. Yeah. And to use the... But, but I think it, what I'm trying to get across is it's, it's what people think that matters. Yeah. It's not... Somebody isn't a hero. Somebody isn't worthy of a vote yeah. just because they're honest. Yeah. If they're honest about horrible ideas and yeah. hor horrible thoughts about and stereotypical thoughts yeah. about about their fellow Americans, yeah. that's important. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The content is important. Yeah. You know, there's that old idea. Even goes back to Frank Capra films. You know, oh, we like the plain spoken American or the honest American, but then what's behind that? You know. Yeah. yeah. So, speaking of... And I like Gunner Blood Axe, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I was an early supporter of it. You were. <laughs> the, uh, so can you talk about, uh, about the, what's malignant here? Yeah, well, yeah, there, there's a growth on, yeah. on him. <laughs> he, he's in trouble. Wow, he looks <laughs> so sad. I mean, really sad. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't want to have it. Yeah. He's stuck with it. He's stuck. He's stuck. I, I'm just glad it wasn't a colonoscopy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say colon paula oscopy there. <laughs> um, so you got the race again with the, with the noses, and again, you're going with both of them lying, but yeah. you're putting them in opposition. This, this gets back to, to, to what you were saying earlier. Yeah. Am I going to go with Trump? Yeah. No, because I mean, he, he, she lies. Yeah. He, she, he's in a whole different league from her. He's in a class by himself? He's, yeah, time? class by himself. Okay. Um, and, but this is me being optimistic. This yeah. is me thinking Americans are going to be fed up with lies eventually. And whoever lies first is going to, uh, whoever lies the worst yeah. is going to be it's finished. going to be finished. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're saying uh, Gary Johnson's going to win? <laughs> Jill, Jill Stein. Jill, Jill Stein, okay. And uh, can you talk about this, this uh, with each one, the, uh, the split balloon? Yeah, well, I, every chance I get, I try, I try to be even-handed. Um, here, this was when the FBI announced that they were not going to indict Clinton. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, they, they seem to make a case for an indictment. Yeah. And the Republicans seized on the case they made for the indictment, and the Democrats seized on the fact that she, there was nothing they could prove. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's a, a literal representation of, of, the wording. of them looking at the same sentence yeah. and seeing two completely same, different things. Same two sides. You got Trump and you got the hair swoop here. Yeah. The only thing we have to fear is Muslims and Mexicans and China and Hillary and people who are upset about police brutality and deadbeat NATO members and, and on and on and on. Um, you know, we should, I, I did want to quickly get to, you know, you and I have talked in interviews about police brutality and you've talked about your mom um, gave, made sure when you were a boy that you, it was a toy gun, that it was a translucent toy gun, that it was clear, that it wasn't a solid toy gun. To, to you know, we talk about having the conversation. When do you have the con And you, you have, you know, you have a couple children now. Or I know you yeah. have a baby. Yeah. The so you know, you talk about police brutality, and then this year with everything. I mean, uh, that that comes up. That you must feel passionate in your current cartoons, because as a reader, it, something comes through. Well, I, I could have, well, I, I was an editorial cartoonist in the 90s. I was a freelancer, and I quit after 9-11 mm -hmm. um, to focus on my comic strips. Yeah. And I, I just did not want to do it. I was happy. I was happy not having to watch the news every day. Yeah. And 
um, creating my own little universe and ignoring this one when it yeah. got too bad. Yeah. But then Trayvon Martin got shot. Yeah. And um, that whole thing that the country divided in two. Yeah. And half the country was saying he deserved it. Yeah. And it was so just dehumanizing, yeah. I thought. And when Zimmerman was, was acquitted, I, I wrote a week of strips um, where Lamont accompanies Trayvon Martin to the afterlife. Yeah, we should say this is in Canterville. In it, Canterville. Was, it was a great series. And by the end of it, I realized I, I had to leave out most of what I wanted to say mm. because this is still a comic strip. Yeah. Um, and I realized I could have said all this stuff on the editorial page. Yeah. So next opportunity I got, I asked my editor, are you still interested in me doing editorial cartoons? Yeah. And she said, of course. Wow. So and there you go. So I, I, but it goes back to when I was a kid. I, I could have been Tamir Rice yeah. because of that gun. Yeah. Um, my, my mom, she didn't tell me why, yeah. but she told me that I couldn't play with the same toy guns my other friends played with. She said I had to play with this bright, green, ugly, translucent water gun. Yeah. And so I did. And yeah. so I, I, was walking to, I was walking to a corner store one day, snuck out of the house. I was too young to leave by myself. Yeah. But I wanted to go get a comic book and play Q-Bert. Wow. So I was, I was there with my gun, and I was shooting the bench. I was shooting the stop sign yeah. and everything, because they were stormtroopers in the <laughs> sky. And I was Han Solo. Yeah. And I knelt, I knelt down to fill up the, the gun in a puddle. Yeah. And there was a shadow, and I looked up, and it was a police officer. Yeah. And he had his gun out. Wow. And he said that, that um, he asked what I was doing there. He asked where I lived. He said they had some complaints. Mm -hmm. He took my gun from me. Wow. And then he went That's back. That's why you're car. really mad. Is it? He took well, the ring. <laughs> he took it away. I'm but just kidding. I'm just kidding. If it had been instead of bright green translucent yeah. plastic, yeah. I might not be here right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just being a, a regular kid. Yeah. Um, so this is this is important to me, especially now that I have a, a son, he's almost three. Yeah. And I look at him and I and I'm thinking, when am I gonna have to talk to him about this? Yeah. We we've been whenever people bring guns to the park, we take him home. Mm. Or we take him somewhere else because I don't want him to want to play with them. Wow. Um, so I don't know how to do an awful lot of things, yeah. but I know how to be a cartoonist. Yeah. And every time I sit down to draw a cartoon, every time something like this happens where some innocent, innocent person, black, white, whatever, is shot by the police, mm -hmm. I think about my son. Yeah. And I think I need to make the world better for him. Yeah. The only way I know how to do it is to keep talking about it. Yeah. So that's, that's what I do. That's my applause. Well, we should have time. Well said. Well said quickly. Can I, I, I should probably jump ahead to this one. You've drawn Trump there as the Lincoln Memorial at yeah. a house divided. And, uh, and again, Trump with outreach and the whack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, Oh, it, <laughs> Hillary. Well, this one caught my eye. Hillary with candor, pen, penicillin, you know, with the pneumonia, yeah. news about the pneumonia, but you've got candor. I thought that was powerful. And then, like we talked about being killed because of their color, you're willing to also draw about the police when they were, you know, wrongly, wrongly targeted. Um, and uh, it's okay. <laughs> we'll just say we feared for our lives. Wow. 2015 was a bad year for that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, we're, we need to wrap up. So let me just ask each of you guys, um, as cartoonists, not as American citizens, but as good American cartoonists, uh, you don't have to say who you're, who you're voting for, who you want, but are, are, are there certain aspects of each candidate that getting into a new year you just sort of salivate? Is there satirical red meat uh, on the horizon? Well... I'll just say the obvious one. Both of them have trouble with the truth. Yeah. Both of them have, neither one of them is straightforward. Yeah. Um, they're, they're both hiding things that we deserve to know. Yeah. 
Uh, so there will be material no matter but, who. You know, I have to yeah. say, uh, as a political cartoonist, I'm voting for both of them. Wow, OK. <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, once, once in California and once in Chicago. OK. <laughs> you might, you could do two in Chicago. You That's could, right. Uh, two for the <laughs> price of one. Well, thank you guys, because you enlighten, you make us laugh, and at the same time, we're informed, because you guys do true journalism. A big hand, please, for Michael Ramirez and Darren Bell. Thank you, guys. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.